Kex on Outdoor Journal. Holy smokes! We hook into some Lunker Lake Trout and Lively Salmon on gorgeous Lake Willoughby with fishing tackle innovator Keith Chamberlain. Then we travel a few miles north to the Canadian border and explore the Eagle Point Wildlife Management Area in Derby. We also get a close-up look at raptors with an innovative teacher who uses bird banding as a way to get his students excited about science. This program has been made possible by a generous grant from the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department, conserving our fish, wildlife, plants, and their habitats for all Vermonters to enjoy. There we go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good line play. Okay, and you turned him so he's looking at us. He's heading in this direction. Okay, you gotta wait for him. He's coming right over the pines. Everybody be ready. Tiffany. Tiffany pull. All right. <laughs> We're a team, Tiffany. It's not every day that a Vermont student has the opportunity to capture hawks and other birds of prey. But for kids in Addison County's Diversified Occupations Program, banding raptors is a regular part of a science curriculum that stresses knowledge gained through experience. Beautiful. All right, Dustin, nice job. I don't really know of any other program where students are going out every day, getting in a bus, climbing up a mountain and catching migrating birds of prey. So this is something that they have the knowledge about. They are the experts. We could be out there watching the birds all year long, and then all of a sudden, if they're manning the trigger when that hawk comes in and they get to pull that trigger, we not only caught the hawk, but we caught the student as well. And we, we hooked them. The Diversified Occupations Program serves high school students with special academic, vocational, and behavioral needs. The goal is for every student to graduate with a job in place and the skills needed for independent living. For almost two decades, special educator Rodney Olson has used bird banding to engage his students in science, the outdoors, and the environment. This year was a special year because the students got to build the banding station. So we started with two by fours, plywood, and we hauled it up on the mountain and we built this hawk blind. So we learned a lot of different skills just in the process of building it. That in itself is, is a wonderful achievement. However, now that you have a banding station, the students have to operate it. All right, Dustin, bring it up. In addition to the blind the students built at Snake Mountain in Addison, they also use another blind at the Dead Creek State Wildlife Management Area, which is also in the town of Addison. At the Dead Creek site, they capture grassland birds and local raptors. The banding site on Snake Mountain is used exclusively to capture migrating raptors on fall days with a good north wind. Snake Mountain is not just a good site to watch raptors in, in the fall. It's a fantastic site to watch raptors in the fall. On a, a good north wind in the middle of October, you could have probably 150 red tails moving through Snake Mountain. And what they'll do is uh, they're using the updrafts that are produced on the north slope of Snake Mountain. So what you have is uh, Snake Mountain, a nice ridge, and you have a wind driving up it. So the birds going at lower altitude will follow the ridge line all the way up to the top of Snake Mountain and then banner off once they reach the peak. And they would use that to conserve energy. And that's really what raptors are trying to do while they're migrating. It's all about conservation of energy. Pigeons and starlings are used to lure red-tailed hawks and other raptors to the ground, where they are then captured with bow nets. Even on a good north wind day, there is a lot of scanning and waiting. I'm bored. The kids chant, I'm bored, as a good luck charm, and it seems to work. We got one coming in, I think. Give it a wiggle. Once an approaching hawk is spotted, a series of ropes are pulled to manipulate the lure bird and get the hawk's attention. Within a blink of an eye, it's on the lure and the trap is deployed. 
As soon as the net is sprung, the hawk releases the lure bird unharmed. At this point, the students are far from bored. And with no other raptors overhead, it's time to remove the captured hawk and begin the banding process. The first thing going through the student's mind is fear. They're totally afraid of it. And it doesn't matter if they're uh, a senior, six foot four football player, or if it's a freshman coming in for the first time, it's fear. Because they see the beak on the bird, they see the talons, and they don't know what to do. And then they have to trust you. So then when you talk them through it and you hand a bird to them and they're able to hold it correctly, you could see them perk right up and they, they know it's okay. And then we can't stop them after that. Then they all want their banding licenses. And we've had some kids go on and actually get their banding licenses. Okay. Banding takes place inside the blind. The birds are placed head first in the tubes to keep them calm. The students assist Rodney throughout the banding process and they also help collect a variety of measurements. But there's a lot more going on than just recording data. So did you notice something different about the tail on this one, Stacy? It's not red. It's not red. Not all of it's red. And it's yeah. very barred. Look how barred that is. We don't let good science get in the way of good education. So there are certain measurements we might not take. We might not take weight because it's not a required measurement that we have to take. However, all this data that we take is sent to the Federal Bird Banding Lab and compiled with the rest of the nation's totals and used on all these different projects and initiatives. And we've had our hand in many different projects where we've captured bobolinks. Our students, our high school students, are catching bobolinks, taking feather samples and giving them to the Vermont Center for Eco Studies and they're taking all that information further. So all of our information we might not use as far as publishing or coming up with habitat assessments or anything, but other people are welcome to use our data. So all of this information is being used. However, we are using it to our advantage. We're actually um, using it as a tool just to motivate kids to learn. I'll tell you what makes it easier. Once a bird is banded and its measurements recorded, it's time to release it. For most students, this is the most enjoyable step in the process. One. Two, three, throw it! As an educator, I'm proud of the students and what they do and where they come from. When they come into the classroom, a lot of them have never even seen a hawk before. And after being out at the banding station, they're using the terminology, they're handling the birds just like a professional raptor biologist would do. Ready? In yep. fact, on one of our visits to the Snake Mountain Blind site, a raptor researcher from New York captured a golden eagle just as we arrived. So golden eagle, why do they call it a golden eagle, guys? Well, we built that blind and we affectionately call it the golden eagle blind because our hopes was to eventually catch a golden eagle. We've had them come in before. We've had them make passes at our banding station. We've had them in the traps. We've pulled the trigger on them, but we've never captured one and banded it. So on that day, we caught our first golden eagle ever. Although we did not witness the capture, it was a tremendous treat for Rodney and the students to help with the banding, data collection, and release. Come on in, guys. Check this out. This is going to be fantastic. Two, three. There you go. Two. What number do you have? Or at least three. Zero, six, two, nine. Your you're, you're an eagle. After a fall filled with field and classroom work, Rodney takes his students to the Mary Hogan Elementary School in Middlebury. Here his students lead workshops for third graders and share what they have learned. They run three stations, one focused on bird identification, another on netting birds, and one on bird banding. The third graders even create a band for themselves. One thing that's true is that you don't really learn anything until you have to teach it. So it gives our students the chance to really dig deep, to learn this material, and then now they have to teach it. And what they realize is that it's very difficult. So they have to step back. They really have to try to figure out why they're learning this, why is it important, and how can they convey it to others. And if they're going to be stewards of the environment, they really need to get this message across to others. All right, give it a good squeeze right there. Although Rodney is proud that three of his students have gone on to become certified bird banders, the goals of the project are much broader. In addition to a better understanding of wildlife and the environment, this hands-on program develops confidence in the students 
and a real connection to the outside world around them. I have a small pet peeve that I have a personal battle against, and that's technology. If you're bored, you look down at your hand and you look at your Palm Pilot or you look at your cell phone, and no one's looking up. You know, there's so much going on over our heads that it's nice that when our students come in in the morning and they say, Mr. Olson, on the way in, I saw three red tails and a harrier. Well, I know they're engaged and they're looking up and they're more aware in, in their surroundings. And it's right in our backyard. For more information on this or any other Outdoor Journal segment, be sure to visit our website at vpt.org. Our site features video on demand, contact information, and links to related sites. You can call, write, or email us. And as always, we look forward to your comments and suggestions. This program has been made possible by a generous grant from the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department, conserving our fish, wildlife, plants, and their habitats for all Vermonters to enjoy.